coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Daroni's H1 eVTOL prototype surpasses 50 successful test flights. FAA denies request to extend BB loss comment period. And FAA proposes pilot powered lift aircraft regulations. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Doroni's H1 eVTOL prototype surpasses 50 successful test flights. Doroni Aerospace announced it has completed upwards of 50 test flights of its electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, the Doroni Aerospace H-1. Doroni's H-1 is a two-seat personal quadcopter eVTOL with an advertised top speed of 121 knots, a cruising speed of 87 knots, a range of 52 nautical miles, and a recharge interval from 20 to 80 percent charge of 20 minutes. Doroni's website states the 23-foot-long, 15-foot-wide, 5.5-foot-tall H1 will weigh 1,650 pounds and have a 500-pound payload. Initially, the website set forth the H1 will be offered to the public at an estimated starting retail price of $195,000. The machine's estimated cost has since risen to $250,000. Sticker price notwithstanding, Doroni asserts legal operation of the H-1 will require only a valid driver's license and completion of a 20-hour Doroni-provided training course. To date, Doroni, by virtue of the equity crowdfunding platform StartEngine.com and the optimism of some 1,900 investors, has raised over $3.6 million. In May 2023, the company launched a Series A offering, aiming to raise $20 to $30 million to sustain ongoing development of its H-1 platform. And coming up after the break, MIT developing one megawatt electric aero power plant. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. MIT developing one megawatt electric aero power plant. MIT's campus news outlet reported a group of MIT engineers has set out to design and build a one megawatt electric motor conducive to the propulsive needs of larger aircraft. To date, the group has tested the Incoit motor's major components and demonstrated by dint of detailed computations that the contraption, once completed, will output one megawatt of power at a weight and size consistent with those of extant small aero engines. Compatible with fully electric and hybrid electric power sources, the motor stands to impel both conventional and advanced air mobility platforms. U.S. Navy gives the MQ-9BC Guardian a workout at Northern Edge 2023. General Atomic's Aeronautical Systems earned some bragging rights for its Sea Guardian's performance at the recent Northern Edge 2023 exercise, where flights brought out the full range of capabilities for communication, detection, networking, and targeting. The training exercise took place in the Gulf of Alaska to further hone forces under the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command for their ability to react to crises throughout the greater Asian Pacific region. The Sea Guardian is a maritime derivative of the land-based MQ-9B Sky Guardian. VFS announces winners of Vertical Flight Student Competition. The Vertical Flight Society announced the winners of its third annual Design Build Vertical Flight Student Competition. Auburn University prevailed, with the University of Maryland taking second place and McGill University finishing strongly in third. By virtue of its annual Remote Control Electric Power Vertical Takeoff and Landing DBVF competition, the Vertical Flight Society seeks to encourage and cultivate student interest in unmanned aircraft technology and small air vehicle design and fabrication. The competition is designed to develop hands-on skills and familiarization with electric VTOL and advanced air mobility technology at the university level. 
Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 previewed. 2023's Microsoft Xbox Game Showcase has wrapped. Among the bigger surprises sprung during 2023's showcase was the news that Azobo Studio is hard at work on a wholly new version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Somewhat unimaginatively titled Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, the sequel endeavors to personalize the flight simulation experience by offering a broadened palette of aeronautical endeavors the likes of aerial firefighting, crop dusting, and helicopter sky crane operations. Well, that was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. FAA denies request to extend BB Law's comment period. The FAA has denied a request from aviation stakeholders to include the NBAA, seeking an extension to the comment period pertaining to the recently published docket number FAA 2022-0921, UAS Beyond Visual Line of Sight, and related petitions for exemption. The agency opted rather to stick with its original, inexplicably expedited 20-day comment period. NBAA Senior Director of Air Traffic Services and Infrastructure Heidi Williams remarked, quote, we are disappointed with what is undoubtedly an expedited comment period. However, BV loss is not new to the industry. We have been testing and exploring these operations safely in the national airspace system for years and are confident these experiences will allow us to provide meaningful, effective feedback even the short comment period." End quote. Comments on the proposed measure are due June 14, 2023, and the FAA requests commenters provide citations and copies of any relevant studies or reports upon which their respective comments are in part or fully predicated. Coming up after these messages, FAA proposes pilot powered lift aircraft regulations. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. FAA proposes pilot powered lift aircraft regulations. The FAA has published a preview of its long-awaited Special Federal Aviation Regulation Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, addressing operational and airman qualification requirements for powered lift aircraft. Subject rulemaking, which the FAA called a key step toward safely enabling advanced air mobility, is salient to the industry-wide launch of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. In the proposed rules preamble, the FAA explains the rulemaking is necessary in so much as existing regulations failed to anticipate the design diversity of the powered lift aircraft soon to be undergoing FAA type certification process. The agency maintains the extant aeronautical experience requirements for powered lift aircraft are inconsistent with the effective and efficient training and certificating of the initial cadre of powered lift flight instructors and pilots. Furthermore, the regulations for certain commercial operations under Part 135 lack specific language addressing qualifications for powered lift pilots. Considered against the Part 135 requirements for pilots of airplanes and helicopters, the omission occasions a safety gap. In addition to airman qualifications, the proposed rule addresses several operational subparts, thereby allowing for powered lift operators under Part 91, 135, and 136 commercial air tours and national parks air tour management. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.